breaking tonight in an exploding media story. Hugh Edwards has been named as the BBC star facing allegations of illicit behaviour from four young people. A statement released by his wife on his behalf read as follows. Once well enough to do so, he intends to respond to the stories that have been published. To be clear, Hugh was first told that there were allegations being made against him last Thursday. Just before Hugh Edwards came forward, the Met Police confirmed that no criminal offence had been committed by the presenter. They added, we are aware of media reporting of further allegations against the same individual. No specific details or information about these allegations have been passed to us and therefore there is no police action at this time. Well, what I can tell you is that the BBC have resumed their own internal investigation. So to discuss... Elements. I'm joined by Mark Williams Thomas, the investigative journalist and former police detective who helped expose Jimmy Savile. Mark Williams Thomas, your reaction to the manner of the release of Hugh Edwards' name? Good evening, Mark. Well, it had to come, and it was only a matter of days away. Uh, and of course, this afternoon, she released it on his behalf. Uh, he, there's been so much speculation, in, not in just in regards to him, but of course, against other presenters who have come out and defended themselves. So it was right that he came forward and said something. Her statement is very clear in terms of the fact that he is receiving mental health inpatient care and that he suffered for some period of time. But let's be very clear to split this up. The police this afternoon said there were no criminal offences in relation to allegation one. Don't forget there are four separate allegations now. They haven't considered the other three allegations. But we also have to remember that the fact that there aren't any criminal allegations doesn't mean to say that there isn't any wrongdoing. There is a separate wrongdoing should these offences be proven in relation to his employment. This is a man who holds a very senior position within the BBC, has a position of trust and respectability. And of course, that doesn't mean to say that he can do whatever he wants. There are some very serious allegations, even if they don't get to a criminal point of view. And so the matter now has been back to the BBC. The major problem we've got, of course, is that the BBC sat on this for some 49 days before they even spoke to him. What on earth were they doing for 49 days before talking to him? Uh, I have no confidence that the BBC are capable of dealing with this. And so it's gone back to the BBC from the police who said, you can carry on with your investigation. The BBC now need to come forward and say, Do you know what, we've got this wrong. We didn't deal with it expeditiously. We didn't deal with it appropriately. We should have spoken to him much earlier. We're now going to point, point someone external. Let's not get some barrister involved who probably doesn't even understand safeguarding. Let's get a safeguarding expert to get in there, understand. understand what's going on and start to get to as quickly as possible some clarity. Uh, if any of these allegations are proven to be true but not criminal, what do you think of the implications for Hugh Edwards and his position at the Beeb? I think they're huge. I mean, I'm not sure that Hugh Edwards is ever going to get back on television again. You know, some of these are, these allegations are very serious, whether they're criminal or not. That they are clearly a breach of his position. Uh, I think it's highly unlikely. But we've also got to be very clear in terms of this mental health situation. You know, a mental health situation doesn't make you start messaging uh, young people in the manner that the allegations against him. Yes, he may well be suffering from mental health. You know, we don't know whether that's situational mental health brought upon by the most recent allegations anybody who's suffering the allegations and been under the spot like he, he like he has over the last few days of course that's going to have an impact on his mental health and particularly if this is a man who already suffers from mental health so let's be really clear not to conflict that or conflate that in relation to it and of course what we don't know his wife says he will respond in due course he's not saying I didn't do this these are totally wrong allegations in fact we had uh, John Sopel come out yesterday and say that he's very angry about well, those aren't the messages really you, can, you should be sending out there. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I think it's now important mm. that BBC properly get their house together, not themselves do it, get someone else external into doing it. And let's see. I suspect we will see probably four, more people come forward saying that there's some level of inappropriateness that, that will need to be investigated. And can I ask you, Mark Williams, Thomas, how long you think this current investigation will take? Because I would have thought the quicker, the better. 
Absolutely. I mean, it's taken 49 days for them to even speak to him um, and not pursue any other matters. And they obviously haven't spoken to other people. It's only the fact that it's gone public. I mean, people are criticising The Sun. And let's be very clear, of course, The Sun, as as many other newspapers over the years, have got things wrong. But I, you know, I, I praise The Sun. I think The Sun were very bold to take the steps that they did. And in fact, if they hadn't have taken the steps, I don't think we'd have known about this. The BBC would have covered up and carried on. They didn't even say anything until, in fact, The Sun had approached them. In which time they then decided they were going to talk to Hugh Edwards about it. So, you know, the, the, the Sun have, have acted absolutely appropriately in this case. They've issued a statement to say that they are not going to be uh, printing any new allegations in respect of him, but I think they've done a really good job. It's for the media to hold, you know, our bodies to account, and of course the BBC is a public body. It's for the media to hold them to account. That doesn't always sit, sit uh, comfortably with some people, but we have a role, you have a role, those people who hold a public profile within the media, to hold other people to account. That's exactly what it is, and that's why the British media is the best in the world. And indeed, the free press, and we're going to be discussing that in the next hour. Did the sun go too far or is that ability to report these stories very important for democracy and also just for the public to know, especially when it comes to the state funded national broadcaster? Uh, finally, Mark, briefly, if you can, um, just looking at all the different factors here, you know, your, your background is as a former top policeman and as the man, the investigative journalist, who helped expose Jimmy Savile. Clearly, the allegations and alleged crimes involved are, are very, very different, not on the same scale. But are there any parallels between the BBC's handling of Savile and the current situation? Oh, exact parallels. I mean, we can't draw the comparisons in relation to the allegations as being the same, but the handling is very similar. You know, had we not have got to a position where we exposed Savile and subsequently got huge media landslide, again, the BBC would have covered it up. They did everything possible not to comply with us when we asked them for an interview or we put to them the allegations. It was only when the BB, it was only when the media massively got involved that they suddenly decided to change. And exactly the same has happened here. It, it's so sad because the BBC is a fantastic organisation. There's some brilliant journalists there. I've got some really good friends there. And they do do a very good job. But you've got senior managers there who haven't got a clue with reality. They're utterly detached. And okay. they make the wrong calls. What we need to do is get right people in there. And it's a real shame. OK. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, brilliant intel from a man who knows. Mark Williams-Thomas, former investigative journalist and ex-top cop who helped expose Jimmy Savile.